Cigarettes present the Screen Guild Player. It's the opening night of the Screen Guild Players on the air for Camel. Our stars, Bing Crosby, Ingrid Bergman, and Joan Carroll. Our play, The Bells of St. Mary. Our sponsor, Camel Cigarettes. And our host, Mr. G. Herschel, president of the Motion Picture Relief Fund. Mr. Herschel. Good evening. Tonight is the first broadcast of the Screen Guild Players for its new sponsor, the Bakers of Camel Cigarettes. And I'd like to give you an idea of the great entertainment we have planned for you this season. Clark Gable, Betty Davis, Gary Cooper, Claudette Colbert, Van Johnson, Gregory Peck, Betty Grable, Cary Grant, and a host of others. Yes, the greatest stars and the greatest picture triumphs, and they'll all be here for you every Monday night through the cooperation of the entire motion picture industry. I hope you won't miss a single one. And now, the first play of our new season, The Bells of St. Mary's, starring Ingrid Bergman, Bing Crosby, and Joan Carroll. <laughs> It was a hymn, a litany, a dedication. Oh they, oh, they tell me I made quite a splash at St. Mary's. The very first day I arrived, in fact. You see, Sister Benedict was head of the school, and she thought I did a formal introduction. Children, this is our new pastor, Father O'Malley, and I'm sure he has something very important to say to you. Father? Well, children, you're going to see a lot of me in the future. I'm going to be around here a great deal. So you're going to hear the shortest speech ever made. This is a holiday. Everybody takes a day off. Oh, this Father O'Malley. Pretty effective speech, huh? I am sure they loved it. Well, when we were kids, we used to just live for holidays. You know... We should never get too far away from our childhood. But you can't call a holiday just like that. You have to get permission of the superintendent of schools. Oh, Father, what will we tell the superintendent? Maybe I'll give him a holiday, too. Father, Father, would you like to look around the school? No time like the present, Sister Michael. Oh, it's a lot different from the school I went to. Where, Father? Missouri. Where'd you come from, Sister? I was born in Sweden, but... When I was very young, I came... Uh, uh, don't tell me, Minnesota. <laughs> That's right, Father. And from what I hear, Father, Sister Benedict was quite a tomboy in those days. So? I must admit I played baseball with the boys. Of course, you were pretty good with the stick. Mm-hmm. I used to hit over 300. Brooklyn could have used you today. <laughs> I, guess, I guess we all had it a lot better than these kids. Heavens, they don't even have a place to play. That used to be our playground over there. Where that new building's going up? Yes, we had to sell the ground. We needed the money to fix our old school. They were going to condemn it. Hmm. Gee, you know, it's too bad you don't have a nice new building like like that one they're putting up over there. That would be the answer to everything. Confidentially, Father, that's what we've been praying for. You've been praying for what? That the owner will wake up one morning and give it to us. That who will wake up when and give you what? Oh, Mr. Bogart is the owner. Oh, wait a minute. Let's be practical. Let's face it. Does Mr. Bogart know anything about it? Has anyone asked him? No. We just prayed. We're relying on you to help us, Father. We thought you might talk to Mr. Bogart. Well, I'll be glad to, sister. Only one thing. What? What'll I do when he says, no? <laughs> what do you think Mr. Bogart has told me? No. <laughs> seven different ways, and then he made me a counteroffer. He wanted to buy the old school and tear it down for a parking lot. And frankly, 
I was more than a little on his side. St. Mary's was old, and there was a new school not too far away. And I was all for recommending the sale, except I hadn't figured on Sister Benedict. There must always be a St. Mary's. There must always be a St. Mary's. Yes, St. Mary's was more than a school to her. It was a shrine. And while she'd laugh with me when we differed over little things, she'd fight for the big things to her last breath. The big things. I guess they began with Patsy Gallagher, or should I say with Patsy's mother. Uh, you see, Father, my husband left me a long time ago. Thirteen years, to be exact, before Patsy was born. And you raised her yourself? You've been supporting her all this time? Uh-huh. I suppose you're wondering as to how. So is she. She's getting to be a big girl now, Father. She's beginning to think I'm no good. I want to put her in your care before she finds out she's right. Well, I feel anyone who's as much concerned about her daughter as you are isn't doing too badly. If there was anything really wrong with you, then give it on. Then you'll take her, Father. She can live here at the school? I think it can be arranged. And I'll make a deal with you. Yes? I'll take care of Patsy. You take care of yourself. Sister Benedict, I've been meaning to talk to you. Yes, Father. It's uh, about that new girl, Patsy. The one that started a couple weeks ago. How's she doing, Sister? I'm afraid not very well. No? Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Father, when we accepted this child, it was on your recommendation. We know very little about her parents. But what kind of home life did she have? Oh, you know, the usual... Uh, you said you, you met her mother? Yes. yes. Yes, I met her. Do you know Mrs. Gallagher well? Yes, you might say I know her quite well. And her father, did you meet him? No, no, I... Well, I've heard about him. Are they separated? Well, yes, they are. Is that anything else that I should know? Anything that, that would help? Well, no, that's, that's all that I... Care to tell? Well, yes, that's all. Did anyone ever tell you that you had a dishonest face? Huh? For a priest, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> hmm? I thought I'd drop in tonight, Patsy, see how you were doing. How are you doing? Not too well, Father. Well, what's the problem? It's an essay, Father. The five senses. The five senses. Now, that's an interesting subject. What have you discovered about them? Nothing. See what I mean? Oh, here yeah. now. What are the five senses, Patsy? Well, to see, to hear, to taste, to smell, um, and to feel. That's right, right. Who's this essay for? Sister Benedict. Sister Benedict. Oh, we'll have to take dead aim on this one. See if we can get you an A. Hmm, now let's see. Man is endowed with certain powers which we call five senses. Now, if he has common sense, he will get great happiness out of life by using these powers within a right reason. Now, for instance... You're happy you came to St. Mary's, aren't you? Oh, yes, Father. That's what I mean, to be glad you're alive. To be grateful because people are kind to you and to be able to see some of nature's great wonders. The budding of the flowers in spring and the changing of leaves in the autumn. To be able to appreciate beautiful music. To be conscious of the beauty of tasting and feeling and hearing the things that are good for you. To be aware of why you're here. Oh, I could go on and on and on. Well, why don't you, Father? Hmm, well, let's see. Isn't that a piano? Uh-huh. Well, aren't these hands meant to play it? Uh-huh. Then I think I will. What, Father? And go on and on and on. Every time you're near a row, aren't you glad you've got a nose? And if the dawn is fresh with dew, aren't you glad you're you? When a meadow lark appears, aren't you glad you've got two ears? And if your heart is singing too, aren't you glad you're you? You can see a summer sky, or touch a friendly hand, or taste an apple pie. Pardon the grammar, but ain't life grand. And when you wake up each morn, aren't you glad that you were born? Think what you've got the whole day through. Aren't you glad you're you? Well, Patsy, 
I'll leave you with these few little thoughts. What do you make of them? Well, if you can't appreciate your five senses, then your life isn't worth five cents. That's good. That's good. Well, I hope you do all right tomorrow. Thank you, Father. I feel much better. You know what? What? feel pretty good myself. Everybody quiet now. Class, we are very fortunate in having Father O'Malley with us today. So we'll read some of our compositions aloud. Luther? Luther? How'd he get in here? Never knew. All right, Luther. The five senses. I like to taste the ice cream cones with the toy strawberry. I like to listen to the Lone Ranger High Silver. I like to smell hot dogs at the ballpark. I like to feel... Oh, good. Now, don't laugh, children. Luther means he wants to be a good boy. He wants to feel good inside. Don't you, Luther? No, sister. What I meant to feel good is like, well, when the bell rings at 3 o'clock. Or when it's Easter vacation, better still. That's what I mean to feel good. <clears throat> well, uh, after all, Father, it has both honesty and imagination. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Luther. Now, um, you, Patsy? The six senses. Well, the subject I gave you was the five senses. Well, I chose for my subject six senses. Well, go on, Patsy, go on. The six senses. To see, to hear, to taste, to smell, to feel, and to be. And the most important is the last. The sixth sense is to be able to enjoy the other five senses properly. To be. That's what really matters. It's like a world inside us, and it's up to us what we make of it. Through common sense. Common sense is an internal sense whose function it is to differentiate between the various reports of the senses or to reduce these reports to the unity of a common perception. <clears throat> As William Shakespeare said... Saved by the bell. Thank you, Patsy. That was very good. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. Amen. All right, children, you may go. <laughs> well, Sister Benedict, I really learned something. Oh? Uh, Patsy shows uh, quite a lot of promise, don't you think? Oh, definitely. Hmm, what are you going to give her? A, a B, perhaps? Oh, no, I... I think at least an A. Oh, good, that's fine. Well, as a matter of fact, I think it should be maybe a, a plus, don't you, Father? Oh, that might be overdoing it, it a little. It had a plus quality to it. Yeah, well, a girl like Patsy needs a lot of encouragement. She has such a fine mind. Yes, remarkable. Mm -hmm. In fact, she has the mentality of... of a man your age. Well, there's another sense, you know, sister. Oh, no. Yes. Don't tell me. Yes, sense enough to know when to leave. Good afternoon. In just a moment, you'll hear Act Two of The Bells of St. Mary, starring Ingrid Bergman, Bing Crosby, and Joan Carroll. But first, a word about camels. Experience is the best. A magnificent horse, glossy as satin, clears a high jump. In the saddle sits a beautiful young woman, one of the bright stars of the sports world. Her name is Pat Hackett. She's had years of experience in riding and training jumpers. And that experience shows as she clears that five-bar jump. As Miss Hackett said... Experience is the best teacher in jumping a horse. It is in choosing a cigarette, too. The wartime cigarette shortage was a real experience. Of all the brands I smoked, camels suit me best. Throughout America, millions of smokers agree with Miss Hackett about camels. Yes, smoking and comparing so many different brands during the wartime cigarette shortage made millions experts in judging the differences in cigarette quality. Having experience with so many different brands, smokers again and again found they prefer camels for rich, full flavor. Camels for cool mildness. As a result, more people are smoking camels than ever before. Experience is the best teacher. Try a camel yourself. C-A-M-E-L-S. And now, act two of The Bells of St. Mary, starring Bing Crosby, Ingrid Bergman, and Joan Carroll. Father O'Malley continues our story.
You know, the days skip right along when you're busy. And a school like St. Mary's can keep you pretty active. Thanksgiving, Christmas, Easter. And then almost as I knew it. Beautiful. I love that song. Yes, it's so fresh and gay. Mr. Benedict should play it more often. Maybe spring should come twice a year. <laughs> How's that? Oh. oh, Father O'Malley. Oh, now, don't let me slow you up. Don't stop. Tell me. You know Birmingham Bertha? Oh, oh you don't know that. Well, how about the school song, then? Oh, yes. Mr. Benedict has a new version of it with the steps and everything. She's a bit proud of it. Well, then sing that. Won't you sing the melody, Father? Just so you talk me into it. like that in years. No, <laughs> yes, but it wasn't all laughs and music. There were some things that had me plenty worried. For one thing, that building next door was almost completed. Sister Benedict and the others went on praying serenely, confident that it was being finished for them. Of course, nobody bothered to ask Mr. Bogardus, and I shuddered to think what would happen when they did. That was one thing. And the other. Come in. Oh, hello, Father. Oh, don't get up. I'm just the pastor here. Well, grading the final exams, I see. Yes, Father. Ran into some of the girls out in the hall. You did? Yeah, they're sort of dying of curiosity, so I'm supposed to come in and, without your knowing it, of course, find out how they did. I presume you opened your heart and passed them all, huh? All but one, Father. This one. I'm sorry, Father. But this is only one subject. The others are even worse. Her average is below 60. Well, she got the date right. She spelled her name right. Couldn't you give her something for that? Come on, add it up again. Maybe pass. Don't you think the honor of the school means anything? Well, but what about Patsy? She's just beginning to believe in herself. A, a blow like this, a child may never get over it. Father, believe me, my heart aches for Patsy. And I've done everything possible to help her. But, but I must uphold our standards. If you order me to pass her, I shall do so. But her mark remains the same. Sister, you and I have had our little differences of opinion, but they haven't been important. This is. This is serious. I'm not going to order you to do anything, but... It's up to you. But, but she failed. <laughs> I can't take it, I tell you. All those howling brats around the place. The building's almost done. We'll be opening up pretty soon. How am I going to work with all that noise? How do I? Oh, now look here, Father. This is no joke. I'm a sick man. I've got a pretty bad heart. I wonder why. Hmm? What do you mean, why? Believe me, Mr. Bogartis, that's not just the pastor talking. I've got science on my side. Yes, sir. Scientists say that there's nothing ever wasted in this world. And I was just wondering if that bum ticker of yours might have some purpose. Oh, Father... Father O'Malley, you better come quickly. What's happened? Sister Benedict had a fainting spell in the chapel. She's quite ill. I'll come right along. Uh, excuse me, Father. Hmm? Is that include... What? That sister, I mean. Spends her whole life helping others. And now she's sick. You think that's got a purpose, too? Who knows? How is she? Well, 
Well, she's running a little temperature. I understand she's had these attacks before. Uh, so Sister Michael tells me. Yes, I hope it's not serious. She's such a remarkable she woman. She certainly is. <laughs> Didn't even want to talk about herself. Just about that new building next door and Mr. Bogota. Yes, she's done a heap of praying for both. Well, prayer's a wonderful thing, Father, but if Bogota ever gives her that building, I'll... Uh-huh. Oh, oh, nothing spectacular now, Doctor. Well, I hate to see her disillusioned. By the way, Father, how did you happen to call me in? Oh, I've, I've heard uh, Bogarda talk about you. He talks quite a lot about you. Today. He talks quite a lot to me. Mm-hmm. Calls me a dozen times a day. His heart's pretty bad, isn't it? Yes, it is. What are you giving him for it, Phil? Why? You got a better pres- prescription? Well, I, I knew a fellow once. He had a very bad heart. In fact, they only gave him six months to live, but he spent that six months doing so much good that, you know, he lived to be 90. Is that so? Mm-hmm. You mean doing good for others is... Good for a bad heart? Well, you spend your whole life doing for others, don't you, Doctor? Why, yes. Yeah. Yeah. How's your heart? Fine. There you are. You mustn't ask me what really did it. Sister's prayers or the doctor's persuasion. Frankly, I don't see that it matters when heaven and science teamed up like that. But anyway, just a few days later... Well, O'Malley, you'll never guess the most wonderful thing, a miracle. So... Mr. Bogardus just came to see me, and Father, he's going to give, give us, us his building. building. <laughs> <laughs> but but he just told me. How do you know? Well, I figured if fate could move mountains, sister, it could certainly budge Bogardus a few steps. <laughs> I, uh, Father, everyone's so happy around here, Father. I, I hate to be the bearer of bad news. Bad news, Doctor? Sister Benedict. Can she be sent away for a while? Transferred to some easier job? Well, what is it, Doctor? TB. A very early stage. We're lucky to catch it. Does she know about it? Well, normally I'd tell her, but it's such a light case, I don't want to worry her. Oh, but she'll have to know about it. We can't send her away. But... Don't you people more or less go where you're told without question? Yeah. We're supposed to have the stamina to take it. She has plenty of that. But you don't quite understand, Doctor. You see sister and I haven't always agreed on how to run a school. In fact, we recently had one serious difference of opinion. Now, if she's sent away without explanation why she's bound to think it's because Father, of... Father, up to here we were discussing her health. What's best for her. And now we're discussing your feelings. The heck of a way to put it, Doc. I only want to see her get well. That's the trouble, Doctor, and so do I. <laughs> Perfect, Father. The building can be used as a school with hardly any alteration. <laughs> as if God himself had been the architect. That's fine. Oh, and now we can finally tear down our old school and that can become our playground. And, oh, it is all so wonderful. <laughs> and I'm tired. <laughs> You've been working too hard. Oh, it's just the excitement. Father, I'm so happy. I have only one more wish. wish. One wish? That we have no more misunderstanding. Serious ones, I mean. Like Patsy, huh? You still disagree with me, don't you? Father, sometimes we must do things that aren't easy. No matter how much they hurt us, we we have to do what we believe is right. I have something to tell you, sister, that isn't going to be easy. Oh, what is that, Father? Well, you'll be notified shortly that Sister Michael will be in charge here next year. Oh. Oh, she... She'll be so happy. And I, will I be her assistant? It's only fair to tell you, sister, that you're being transferred. It's going to be difficult to leave St. Mary. But we shouldn't become too attached to any one place. Any other school may seem strange at first, but as long as I'm around children, I'll be happy. I'll be happy. Thy holy will in all things. Oh, help me, help me, help me. Mr. Benedict. Oh, yes. Sit 
The cab is here. Thank you. I'm coming now. Goodbye, Sister Benedict. Goodbye, Sister. Sister Benedict, we know your heart will be here and we'll always remember you in our prayers. Thank you. Goodbye, Father. Goodbye, Sister. Sister. Sister Benedict, uh, wait. Yes. Yes, Father. Sister, I... I can't let you go like this. When the doctor said you were perfect, he was right. But that's what you are. But he didn't mean physically. Sister. Because, Sister, you have a touch of tuberculosis. Then, then that's Oh, the doctor felt... Well, he felt we shouldn't worry about it, but... Thank you. Thank you, Father. You made me very happy. I'll get well quickly now. Oh, of course you will, Sister. Of course I will. And remember, if you ever need anything, no matter where it is or where you happen to be, just dial O for O'Malley. I'll remember, Father. O for O'Malley. and John Carroll for your magnificent performances in the Bells of St. Mary. We all love the story, Mr. Herschel, so it was nice to renew our friendship with it. And it was an extra pleasure to appear on the Screen Guild program for Carmen Cigarettes, knowing that it helped support the wonderful work of the Motion Picture Relief Fund and its country house. And there's another wonderful thing that the Carmel people are doing. Thing, would you like to tell them about it? By all means. In a, in a world, you know, that's a little prone to forget so easily... The makers of Camel Cigarettes aren't forgetting. Every week they send a parcel of free camels to servicemen's hospitals from coast to coast. This week the camels go to the Veterans Hospital at Oteen, North Carolina, and to the U.S. Army Station Hospital right here in California at Stoneman. Also to the U.S. Naval Hospital at Jacksonville, Florida, and the U.S. Marine Hospital at New Orleans. And if you veterans down there at the Kennedy Veterans Hospital in Memphis are listening in right now on your Philco... Philco? Where where are they? How did that get... Well, somebody's been taking care of me here in the school. <laughs> You'll be glad to know that you're going to get some of those free camels, too. According to a nationwide survey, more doctors smoke camels than any other cigarettes. Doctors practicing in every field of medicine. Doctors living in every state of the Union. 113,597 doctors were questioned by three leading independent research organizations. What cigarette do you smoke, doctor, was asked. The brand name most was Camel. C-A-M-E-L-S. In our coming Monday evening broadcast of Camel Cigarettes, Screen Guild players, you will hear the greatest stars in pictures. Among them, Joan Fontaine, Jimmy Stewart, Barbara Stanwyck, Danny Cage, Walter Pigeon. And for next Monday, we have a real surprise for you. Camel Cigarettes will present the Screen Guild players in the hilarious comedy, My Favorite Brunette. And it will star Bob Hope and Dorothy L'Amour. Be sure to listen. More pipes, both Prince Albert and any other tobacco. Yes, the rich, cool flavor of Prince Albert. Prince Albert's mellow mildness make it a steady favor. Prince Albert is especially made for smoking pleasure. Crimp cut to burn slow, smoke cool. PA's choice tobacco is specially treated to ensure against tongue bite. Just try a pipe full of Prince Albert. See if you, too, don't prefer it to any other brand. Tonight's Screen Guild play was directed by Bill Lawrence and adapted for radio by Harry Cronman. The music was arranged and conducted by Wilbur Hatch. The Bells of St. Mary's, which was directed by Leo McCary, was presented through the courtesy of Rainbow Productions, who are currently making Good Sam, starring Gary Cooper and Ann Sheridan, also directed by Leo McCary. Camel Cigarettes bring you the Von Monroe Show every Saturday night on the same CBS station. This is Michael Roy in Hollywood wishing you good night for Camel Cigarettes. CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.